with a bigger boat next time, mate. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to another episode. What you just saw was a fella named Tyrick. He's a good friend of mine. We're up here in good un country, and Ty's diving right now for crayfish. Now, which I know that seems mad. It's crocodile country, and we're right here on the coast, and I have seen crocodiles right here. But um, like all the boys say up here, Think about the crocodile and the crocodile will come. So that's the last we're going to talk about crocodiles. Um, what we're doing this morning is diving for crayfish. Ty has a, they, up here, the boys make these handmade um, short crayfish spears. So Ty's got one of them. It's a little bit milky, but he's come out to camp here pretty early this morning where we're camped out, the family camp. And um, just cruise along this coastline, bombing a bombing a bombing, looking for, looking for crayfish before this wind kicks in. So yeah, absolutely beautiful part of, of Australia. We are at the um, Goodun country, like I said, which is the northernmost point of the Australian continent, Pajinka, uh, which is a little bit further north than where I am here right now. Not far though. And then out there behind me, the Torres Strait Islands. So this trip, if, you've, if this is the first episode you've been watching, this season we're up here, uh, Goodun, Angamuthi country, and heading out also into the Torres Strait Islands to do some exploring out there, Badu and, and several other islands. So stick around, it's going to be an amazing season. How's it look down there, mate? Oh, it's a bit dirty, but should be right. A bit milky? Yep. Uh, he's such a goer. So yeah, my family's actually up here with me this trip, which is, which is new for me. Um, we're up here for a few months just to spend time in community, um, you know, interacting with all the locals up here, get my kids interacting with the locals, going to the local school, stuff like that. So last night all the families came out to camp here, um, so I actually brought a projector screen out, a big blow projector screen, and we plugged into the EcoFlow and the Starlink and got a movie playing for all the kids and um, just sat there on the beach having a big cook up. It was, it was absolutely amazing, such a fun night, such beautiful people. And I imagine today is going to be very, very similar. Now the families up here live from the ocean, whether it's turtle, fish, dugong, you know, netting for mullet, barramundi, diving in the rivers, diving for crayfish, all sorts of stuff. And Ty wanted to show me, we had an, a nice morning this morning with low winds, so Ty came out early to show me how they dive for crayfish. And he's loading up right now, I reckon he's spotted one. Here we go, so like I said, the boys make um, their own spears up here. So these little handmade short crayfish spears, like a gidgey, you know, and uh, what's he got? Nothing yet. And they just basically dive his, oh, he's got one. He's got one. Yeah, baba. Woo. He's got it with a little hand spear. <laughs> Good job, mate. Right in the head, look at that, very shot. All right, everyone meet Tyrick. How you going? <laughs> you might have met him in a previous episode, but yeah, we're back today. Ty's gonna to show us how to catch crayfish. And he started the morning right. What a good way to start the morning, mate. Eh? I reckon. Show us this thing. So you made this? No, it was um, Rob and Pablo in town, another, another uncle in town. Mate. So you make these, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You've got one too? Somewhere? No, I made three for a mate, but I don't think he used it, he wanted to frame it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So was that the first one you've seen? Yeah, first one, yeah. Uh, what do you reckon? We There's some fish down there, but... There's there? I wouldn't go for a big trout, because oh. I've seen it. I was like, no, crap, crap, <laughs> go for that. All right, so how is it? It's pretty milky? Yeah, it's, it's getting better, bud. 
the further I come out, the busier it's getting worse, but the same sort of right between the edge and the rock. So it's a bit better between there. There you go. <laughs> How good's this spot? Glass out. Oh my god, look at this bay behind me. Old shacks up here on the beach. What a magic place. I think he just loaded up. So we're just about to make a move, but what we're going to do, yeah, as you can see, this wind's just fluffed up. The cloud cover's coming over, so it's starting to get no good for diving. Um, we're going to go back to the shack and grab some fishing gear and the spears and go down to this river. So what's the visibility like down there, Burra? Uh, a bit milky. Like how far? Uh, about uh, half a metre. Half a metre? <laughs> yeah. Not right. that good. Pulling the gun here. So you break through the antenna off, uh, spin the opposite way so the spikes are coming out, you push it in, spin it, and it grabs oh, the bag for you and pull it, it out. <laughs> That's a good trick. Uh, we got first mate Opie on board. He's coming on the big wild reaches adventure. How do you yeah. feel, buddy? Good. You've forgotten your hat, though, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, mate, that's nearly as big as mine. Oh, nearly. <laughs> bigger? Yeah, that is bigger. Yeah, yeah. Get him in there, right? Get one over here, bud. I reckon there's a big jack in there. Now get out of your way. How big? Bigger than you. You might have to pull it. Yes, good cast. Hard twitch down. You gotta, that's a good pause, yeah, you gotta pause a bit. Is this a slight fit? No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's a good one! Oh, he's coming out under the boat! Oh, bro! I was about to say, let's net him. <laughs> I knew it was gonna spit it because it was just going just mm. to flip there. Oh, oh, no, that's no. it, though, good job. There's some flies in the hat. If I catch a fish, Dad, you gotta get them there now, okay? You're on, mate. You're on. Give me some food, Dad. Wind down and then lift up. It's a jack. Down your back. Oh, that's nice. That's right. We're getting. We're getting. Oh, yeah. Dang. Way back. Oh, 
He's on. He's on. He's got a barrel. Oh, oh, buddy. Buddy, buddy, buddy. What is going? I think you're just winding. Yeah, this is really shallow. This is beautiful. So the idea is between these two islands, it's like a big flat and apparently lots of stingray come through here. So what sort of stingray? Those ones with the white uh, spots? Feather, feather tail. Feather tail. Oh, the spike, uh, the th what are they? Th seasonal spike ones. Th 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 yeah. They're seasonal. They're seasonal. What's that? Not quite ready yet. That's just a log. Bit of a scout around here. Then we might get in the water with the spears. Going for a walk on this little sand cave off the tip of the island, looking for stingray in the shallows. Hope he's absolutely loving this, just being part of it. Keep your eyes out for mud crabs too, mate. Yep. Yeah, there's a bit of a hole here, mate. So you come over here. A deep hole. Deep enough. Is that right there? Yeah. Is it? Where is it? The stingray. Stingray? Is it a stingray? Stingray? Oh, it's gone off. What was it? Get it. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's oh, two. Him. Where is it? I think some of them here. Get him a second time? No. Geez, they're good at just disappearing, eh? They'll be in here somewhere. Do I need to watch out? When you come around here to me, I'll stay behind Ty. I got him that first. I got him, yeah. You'll, you'll see in the... Alex, you'll see in the mango, you'll see the tail coming out. Like here, Alex, look, see one right there? Oh, see yeah. a stingray right there? Can you get him? Yeah, chuck a seal spear. Big Stay back a little bit, do yeah. But what about the all that rope? I'll fix it. You want to get him up on the flat somewhere? Flat, yeah. So Ty's just nailed a feather tail stingray with his um with his cray spear. <laughs> Not ideal, but yeah, we'll get it. It's just sitting there. We just got to sort this guy out first. You stay back from his tail. There you go, that's a bit different. I haven't seen it done like that. Jack, can we, where's the bar? Whoa. So that is what you don't want to know. You can get it out, mate. So there you go, there's a different technique again that I haven't seen before. Um, normally the boys will, there's so many different ways, but with a longer spear, you're a bit safer. You're not as close to that tail and the bar, but Ty's only got the short spear. So the best way to do it, and the way that he was obviously taught, I'll ask him soon, is to knock that whole tail off. Now, I know, 
a lot of you are like, that's cruel, but this is the way people have been doing it up here for a long time, and um, it's not up to me to judge that. But this is going to be a feed. I've got stingray for dinner tonight. Stingray and crayfish. Thanks to Tyrek. What bit do we eat again? The wings. The wings. Where's my spear gone? Maybe there. We'll go get it. Just there. I just got a second one. Missed the first shot, nailed him with a second shot. I'm gonna push him up here into the shallows. We'll do the same thing. Get rid of this barb. We'll take him home for dinner tonight. Oh, we're gonna have a feed tonight. Got him, mate. Got him. So this guy, this is the barb. That is so extremely sharp. And that is what you do not wanna get stuck in any part of your body. So we're extremely careful not to get that stuck. Now, um, the indigenous people all around this country, coastal areas, would use these for all sorts of things like for um, dressing out spear tips, for war spears and things like that. So when you spear someone, these will snap off in their body and they're all like pronged out in different angles. So when you spear someone, it's not gonna come back out. But they're also used as like a knife. They're just a handy little tool. What type is it? Same one, for the type. Oh. When was the first time you got stingray? First time what? Small. When you were a small fella? Yeah, young fella. And just like this, I was going to ask you that. Is that how you were taught to knock the tail off? Yeah. So like safety first, eh? Bloody eyes. Looks like you're trying not to hit the piss sack. Mm. The what? There's a sack in there, like a piss sack. That's... Oh, that's yeah, nice boy. and pink. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, buddy. That's the liver. The emblem you and I did, Mabu, so yep. the liver was bad. It was really brown. Thanks for bringing us out, brother. All good. I'm going to make myself a single lion. prong. Yeah, a single lion spear. Stingray. Yeah. Plywood and some shade. Yeah, bit of shade. A little bit of firewood there. Nice little lunch spot. Time for a cook up. Stingray barb off. Yep. Good on country. How to grab, how to screw the stingray. Yep. Uh, hooked a couple of barramundi. Yeah. I think you hooked three good ones. Still learning to get them in the boat though. Nah, nah. It's just like that. No, I think I need sharpening. <laughs> He's little need sharpening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what I reckon we do? What? When we get back to the boat, we'll take all the Ty's trebles off his lures. <laughs> we blaze all ours! Get a bit of a fire going, and hopefully Ty's gonna cook that barramundi a traditional way. How are you gonna cook your barra Ty, interview Ty? Um, straight on the coals. Straight on the coals. Straight on the coals. Won't that burn the fish? Nah, uh, we got protection around the fish. For the scale. For the scales? Yeah, that's why you don't scale them. So what we need? Good hot coals. Yep. Sit it right on there. I can't be here a while then. My favourite is fresh barra. How good's that going to be? So those coals, oh sorry, those scales protect, they're like the alfoil. Yeah. 
protect the meat so the house is going to be burnt. So all the international viewers are going to go, that what? That looks dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not. Nice. All the inside's protected. You guys wait till you see this. If you've seen the show, you know how this happens. But if you haven't, it's absolutely delicious. The skin's just going to peel off and the flesh is going to be perfect. Can't look. Barramundi cooked the traditional way on the side of the river. It's pretty good to be sitting here. Like this, this fish has been cooked this way for, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of years on the side of these river banks in Northern Australia. Just so simple, hey. Nothing but a bit of salt. I wonder how they got their salt just off the rocks. Or well, they had like the a process. And... On a sea, so the high tide, you low tide, and it all dries up. Yeah. They'd, They'd be collecting that, yeah. hey. Salt just sits on that rock, the sun burns it. Mm. Like, and then like crystallizes. Yeah, they got the salt, yeah. I'm pretty sure. And then and then I'm sure they would have used like some kind of lemongrass or like some whenever they could, some kind of grass to flavour yeah, things. Herbs and stuff, yeah, yeah they would have. Hey Dad. Yeah. Um uh, uh, I know what I'm doing on the way back. What? Sleeping. In the boat. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have to feel a rough ride. Well, it worked in the car. Two fashion sticks. Oh, that was good. Whoa, look at that. You see that? See how Ty just peels that skin back? And it's just perfectly cooked meat underneath. So that's how you know when it's cooked right too, it's when the skin kind of lets go of the flesh. If you're trying to get the skin off and it's not coming off, the meat's not cooked proper. Thanks for lunch, mate. Yeah, I can spring some salt across there. One of the tastiest things I've ever had. Oh yeah, that's so good. Look how I got a bit of lemon. So we couldn't catch that mangrove jack for lunch. What but, mangrove but jack? But the plan now is to... Oh, we got another one. Oh, yeah. How I'm smoking. The plan now, that wind's come right up. We've got a long ride home in the little tinny, so it's going to be bloody wet. But the plan now is to go to the other side of the river there, find a couple of good snags, and hopefully pull up some mangrove jack for dinner. Um, go back to camp, cook up mangrove jack, cook up the stingray, which is called mubbles. And hopefully um, Ty gets another barra. And some crayfish. And yeah, it's up to Ty for us to keep, a, keep another barrel. All right, left no rubbish there. And we're on a little island and the tide's coming in, so we can just leave that, leave those coals to settle down themselves. And we're on mission number two now. Afternoon mission, so we're refueled. It's the best feeling, I was just saying to Ty, to, to get yourself so hungry, you know, exploring all morning and then to sit down and have a feast like that. It just feels so good and I love doing it up here. <laughs> My Lord, nah. crazy. It's not even a huge one. So I just marked so many good fish on the sounder as we came around that corner, hoping that they were threadies or I don't know, something good. Turns out it's just bloody queen fish. But I hope he's just netted his first big fish, which he did pretty good. Well done, buddy. Yep. Nice, net him, net him. Ah, oh, shoot, Oh, you got to do that. Just put your back up. Yeah. Tommy! Come on, come on. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. 
that's it. Uh, good netting, buddy. I got it. find the jack but we've found plenty of barramundi in here but no mangrove jack but we know they're in there because the tide dives here all the time and, and I actually fished close to here the other day and there were so many jack coming in the boat. <laughs> yeah boys! <laughs> Double hook up. Awesome. Good morning guys. What a night it was last night. Um, just having the family come out. So Anthony and Eleanor and the kids came out and uh, Anthony and Tyrick showed us how to do mabus, the traditional way up here. So mabus is the traditional way to cook stingray here in Australia. Um, something that the indigenous tribes of Australia or the coastal tribes have done forever. And it's, um, it's absolutely delicious. Now I had some salt last night from Spice Origins, which is what you saw us cook the barramundi with at lunchtime yesterday. Um, Spice Origins make all sorts of mixes, but they've made me a Wild Reaches mix, which has like, honestly, I was dropping this this um, this fish mix onto the barramundi yesterday at lunchtime. I did it and Ty said the exact same thing. Scooped up a bit of barra and it was like I just squeezed fresh lemon onto the barramundi. Um, he's got all sorts of amazing flavors in there and it's all sourced here in Australia, which is really cool. But um, Anthony was super impressed and he's put it into the marbles last night and it was, absolutely delicious so last night i did the beer battered barra because anthony missed out on that last trip when i was here beer battered barra uh mabus and rice and what else do we have we'll save the crayfish for today we're gonna have crayfish today me and my family i can't remember what else we had but it was just an amazing night nights that i love you know sitting here on the beach like that and um and talking to the local family and just learning a bit more about life growing up here literally in these shacks on the beach with all the kids running around and um, Eleanor was saying that some sometimes it'd be like 30 kids just laid out on those decks when all the kids were young and um, you know Eleanor and, and Anthony looking after them all which is just part of life up here so an amazing night but we got to leave this camp um, it's really hard to film here because although we are more than welcome to stay here um, we can't film properly and I want to I want to show you guys you know our, our life up here the entirety of it so we're going to shift camps um, move up the coast a little bit further and show you both sides of the of Pajinka, the tip of Cape York in up here in um, NPA and then as you all know I'm heading out to the islands to explore out there but to get out of camp here I haven't done this yet I've got to pull this big trailer of mine up through this nasty track now it's only this one section which is pretty nasty but after rolling a trailer last season no the season before I'm really skeptical I haven't really got my trust back in this trailer so just walking up here now to have a bit of a bit of a squeeze out it trying to find the best the best uh, path up and um, low range I might drop all the pressure out of my or not all but drop my cruiser tire pressures down to about 20 25 psi just to get that bigger footprint and um, yeah low and slow I reckon you don't want to get that trailer rocking so low and slow plenty of traction and if I have to winch I don't think I'm going to have to, but there's plenty of big trees up there. Get that Sabre recovery gear out and do a double one pull up to that tree. Actually, that is going to be a wrap for another episode. So I'll show you guys now me driving out of here. Hopefully I get out without a drama and this will be the wrap for the episode. But thank you for coming along for the ride. Thank you to the whole family and George here next door for allowing us to come out here um, on country and, and camp in these beautiful shacks on the beach and just really really feel the country up here i really appreciate it and um i yeah like i say my, me and my family appreciate the hospitality and, and making us feel like we're part of the family um all the food we gathered out of the sea just out the front here was spectacular it's really starting to build up the build-up season is coming i can feel it the last few days have been so much more humid yesterday afternoon we got this beautiful thunderstorm roll through which didn't really rain but um, you can just feel the moisture in the air. So the mangoes are starting to ripen, which means the eel tea and all the fruit in the forest is going to start to ripen. 
pretty exciting times. But um, come back next week because there'll be another episode and I'm sure it's going to be a cracker. We've got so many plans up here. So come back next week and um, yeah, thanks for watching.